Welcome to Mark D. Maker. Today we'll be looking at how to make the eyelids for bird carving. We'll talk about sealers for the wood carving and primers. Come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. Here you can see the study cast and it's very hard to see it, but there is an eyelid here. It's very tiny, goes around the eye. And so we're gonna to try to do that. This is, a, I'm using Magic Sculpt, two-part resin epoxy. I've used other things, um, but you can really control this stuff. You can buy it in smaller containers too. Uh, combine, this is five pounds that you see in the background here, and that runs about $30. I got it from uh, uh, a place in New York, sculpt, uh, Sculpture Place, Sculpture Supply in uh, New York. They shipped it to me. Now here I'm mixing and I've, I'm rolling this out into a little snake-like shape. Trying to get this as, as thin as possible. I, I won't use this whole amount here. I mixed more than I need. Just trying to get it as thin as possible. Still getting it thinner, as thin as I can. And it's starting to get really sticky at this point and I'm gonna use that to my advantage. You can reduce the stickiness by adding water. So when you're mixing it initially, you can add a little water and it won't stick to your gloves or stick to your hands. Now here I'm, I'm laying the little snake of epoxy clay around the eye and crimping the outside part. You see as I'm going along crimping along the outside leaving about half the amount around the eye and I'm more concerned with the inside eyelid than the outside. The outside I can shape with sandpaper, I can carve it once it's dried, but I'm focused on trying to get the inside of that eye shape correct. So you'll want to have plenty of a reference material laying around, lots of pictures. Now, if the clay breaks like it like it did here, you can just get another little piece and blend it right in. And so you just take your time and work that eyelid around. And you can make it as thin as you like by just crimping coming up on it and crimping, leaving the inside eyelid alone and working on the outside of the eyelid. You can, you'll also be able to go in and, and sand and carve this as it dries. So once it's dry, you'll be able to carve it and sand it. As you look at the anatomy of the bird's eyelid, the lower lid kind of tucks up underneath the upper eyelid. So if you're looking for uh, accuracy and realism, uh, you want to pay attention to those little tiny details. And here I'm going in with the X-Acto knife and just cleaning out some of the burn marks from the epoxy. 
that got mashed into uh, the little burn marks. Here, this side is done, the other side is not. And we'll move forward to the other bird that I'm working on. Now this bird, if you remember, it has plastic wood around the eye. And the epoxy, I learned, doesn't stick so well to the plastic wood. Maybe it's because the uh, there's no bird lines in it yet. I will do that after I'm done with the eye. But there's less surface to grip. So it just takes a little bit of patience and crimping in and eventually it starts to uh, stick really well it this epoxy sticks to itself extremely well So you just want to take your time, be very patient. It helps to put on some nice, easygoing music, and just take your time. And, and know that you know it, it takes practice uh, doing the eyelids. They're probably the, for me, they're the most difficult part of, of doing the bird. But know that you can always uh, take a little X-Acto blade and, and carve it off and start over again. Now you can see that the eyelid is much bigger than what it needs to be, but I will go in, sand it, carve it. I'll still be able to shape it uh, just like wood. All right, so the uh, Putty, the two-part epoxy has dried and I cleaned it up a little bit with some sandpaper using one of my little sanding sticks around the eye very carefully you don't want to scratch the eyes or glass and they can scratch uh, took an exacto knife and just lightly scrape off the epoxy that's there and uh, just being careful not to uh, to scratch the glass you'd have to Push pretty hard with the uh, knife to scratch the glass and and trim off anything needed you can always go back and and do repairs if there's any kind of issues but uh, so far so good I also did uh, this little guy I got his eyes just about right and I went ahead and and uh, very on a low temperature it was around a one uh, burned in some details so we can uh, paint this little guy and get him back on the shelf. So <clears throat> I wanted to mention a couple of things before we get started. Um, this is gesso. Some people call it gouache. It is a uh, it's a, like a primer. And it it has tooth, so the paint will stick to it. We'll use very thin layers of gouache on the bird, and and the paint will better adhere to the carving that way. Um, some people seal their carvings first. Now, if you're going to do something any larger than this, I would recommend it because what happens if you live in an area that has a high humidity and you do a carving and it ends up in Arizona, um, it's going to split. The humidity in the wood, it's going to dry out and, uh, and it's going to crack. Um, so by sealing it, you eliminate that possibility. Um, Floyd Schultz 
uh, in, in one of his books references uh, a sealer called Prime made by Fabulon. Fabulon is a thin sealer. Um, it, it soaks into the wood and it, and it does not clog up all these little tiny burn marks. If whatever you seal the wood with clogs these little burn marks, um, you're going to be uh, pretty upset because all that would be for nothing. So you want something that soaks into the wood. Now, in the past, I've used Fabulon. It's, it's really hard to find. I had to drive quite a ways in a small paint store and they had one can of it. Um, I did see it on the internet. There are places you can buy it. <clears throat> um, so once you have it sealed, and I've seen people use uh, Krylon, flat Krylon uh, spray mat, and 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 spray it up close so it goes on really wet and just drips off. But you got to do it all at once and just cover it, and uh, and it soaks in pretty good. Um, but it's iffy because now you're causing drips and uh, it's a little unpredictable. Um, but you don't have to use um, a sealer. And I know some people will probably be pulling their hair out to hear me say that. But um, I don't always use a sealer. I, I'll just use uh, the, the gesso. Uh, of course, my stuff isn't commercially available and I'm not shipping it all over the world, so um, most of my stuff just goes to um, family and friends locally. So this is what Prime looks like, Prime 2 Fabulon, uh, made to seal wood floors. Here I'm pouring out a little bit of gesso. Now, important thing, the top of the gesso here in the lid, you want to keep it clear of dried remnants of the gesso because it, it will drop into your paint and cause these flakes and and uh can just be a real headache so uh keep the top clean and i've watered down this to about the consistency of milk uh, if you've ever used an airbrush it's the, about that consistency something that you could literally spray it's very watery very thin soaks in it's not not uh it's not clogging up any of the lines and that's a good way to see you know a good way to judge is if it starts clogging up these lines and you know you have it too thick and you need to thin it out So I'm going to be putting two coats on this particular bird. Um, everybody kind of does it their own way when it when it comes to painting, for sure. Some uh, some carvers will will use many many coats until they get an absolute pristine pure white bird. Um, you just need to be aware of the little lines and and not clog them up with. Uh, with too much paint. Some carvers will actually tint the gesso with, with paint, a real lightly tint, uh, to give the undercolor of the bird. Uh, so it looks like you know, like if the feathers are gray underneath the top layer of feathers, they'll use a, a, a gray color or, or whatever color uh, is the underlying color. Um, so everybody does it differently. Everybody has their own style and technique, and uh, that develops with time. <clears throat> 
Now, a lot of artists will use a paint stick instead of holding on to the bird. And you'll see me use a paint stick when I go to put the second coat on. And the reason for that is once you get the gesso on, uh, you don't want your hand oils transferring to the gesso. Because when you put on the very, very thin layers or thin coats of color, you know, acrylic paint color and water, sometimes they'll just wick right away from the oil and you'll see your fingerprint. So you want to avoid the oils getting onto the gesso uh, so you'll have a nice even coat of paint. So let's move ahead to the second coating of the gesso. And you can see I've painted right over top of the eyes with the first layer and I will with the second layer as well. And, uh, and that will scrape right off of the eyes, the eyes being glass. It's hard for anything to stick to glass, any kind of a paint. Um, you just want to be careful, once again, not to scratch it. I'll, I'll usually use like a toothpick or something like that. And you can see um, much more coverage here. It's covering up the, the burn marks pretty well. <coughs> the, if you didn't cover up the burn marks, uh, they would show through uh, real dark. Um, especially in the areas the, the, where the feathers are white. This just gives you a nice, clean, fresh start and you can mix your colors and uh, and color theory when we get into in the painting on the next video um, it's pretty fascinating colors that you wouldn't expect Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.